I confirm that my guests are, as you suspected, the Who. And about the time they were getting themselves established, a young Irish actor made a name for himself as one of the new breed of rough, tough, fierce and angry young men. Like the Who, he knew how to enjoy himself in a rampaging sort of way. And like them, he's become just a little more reflective. Indeed, far from smashing up hotel rooms, he re recently was evacuated from one when the building next door caught fire. So a very warm welcome to a survivor, Richard Harris. Michael Aspel, this is your life. Oh. <laughs> it's the wrong colour, I'm what sorry about do? that. What would you do? I get terrified of that. Would I get you? terrified, yeah, I do. I get terrified someone's got to say to me, this is your life. It'd be terrifying. It would be a very long show. I, I, wouldn't, tell uh, you. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't remember half of it. That's I remember trouble. someone said to me from, from, a, from a Random House in New York, asked me would I do um, an autobiography. And I said, I how, how could I do I can't remember half my life. Well, remember just a little while back, yes. we saw all these pictures of you in your dressing gown on the pavement yes. outside the Savoy. I mean, how bad was that? Nasty? Well, well um, I sort of live in hotels throughout the world. I'm not married, you see. It's cheaper than a wife. <laughs> well, it's nice, isn't it? You bring room service and get your clothes cleaned and you order cigarettes, three packs of fags. Can you imagine asking your wife for three packs of fags? Good honest, she doesn't get me three packs of cigarettes. I mean, she's take the piss off and what we can do about it. <laughs> But I was there, and I was asleep in my room, and suddenly, um, and suddenly, the alarm went off. And I... Yeah, I'm not going to wake up for an alarm, you know what I mean? So I slept on, I said, that's a nice sound, and I was fast asleep. But my son was in the other room with his wife. They were watching Tyson fight, the Tyson, when he got knocked out. And he knocked at my door, and he said, I think... He said, Dad, I think there's, um... I think there's a fire. I said, no. He said, well, that's... I said, don't worry about that. That's just an eccentric fire alarm that's going off, doesn't matter. I kind of went back to sleep, and then he said, I think I'm smelling some smoke. So we opened the door of the corridor. It was black. That was fantastic. Really great. <laughs> so I put on my Savoy bathrobe, and I said, was the press around? I can advertise my new play. So I wandered down the street, and said, I saw the cameras. You know, I'm shy. And, I, <laughs> and they said, what are you doing? And I said, well, I was upstairs rehearsing my... I'm doing a play. I'm doing Pirandello's Henry IV here in London. So I said, uh, well, I was rehearsing my play, I didn't know my performance was that electric that I burnt down the theatre, but... Mm. So we got the pages, front pages, and that was all right. In fact, you've had some of your liveliest moments in hotels, haven't you? Well, I kind of find... Well, I sort of, you know, since I got divorced a couple of times, I can't remember how many times now I was married, but I think... <laughs> I think twice, I think, I was married. And as I said earlier, I think they're sort of... They're more compatible to me than women. Hotels. And I kind of found myself going from one... But I've had the most fantastic experiences, I must say, in hotels. Like, I remember I was doing Camelot in, in America and I was staying at the Hyatt Hotel and I was putting out my tray like at one o'clock in the morning and I, had, and, I had, and I had nothing on. You know, at one o'clock, no one's going to be in the corridor, so I was pushing the tray out the door naked. See? Just got it and I was pushing out the door naked and I opened the door like this and I put the trolley up and I thought, well, it looks a mess, so I'll put the tray up on the trolley opposite the room next door so he can get blamed for the mess. <laughs> so I kind of pushed it over like, and as I pushed it, the door closed. <laughs> I'm not having a trousers on. I'm naked. I didn't have a key. So there was a friend of mine who was staying, who was the, uh, the conductor called Terry James. He's a great friend of mine for 30 years and he was, and, and he was in another room. So I thought, well, I'll get a phone, I'll ring down there, I'll ring the reception, so I'm locked out of my room. Then I thought, I won't do that because I'm naked. So. I put which room is Terry James in? So I wandered up all the place, knocking at doors, like, very gently saying, Terry, you know, <laughs> next one, Terry, Terry. And then, of course, it did open, and there was a guy there. He says, yeah, and I said, sorry, wrong room. Went to the next place again. And then I couldn't find him, so I got into the lift. I thought I'd go down the lift, and I started to wave at the reception, naked, <laughs> you see? But the lift was completely glass. <laughs> I swear to God, it was glass. <laughs> and I'm stuck, and I pressed this thing here, and I didn't realise it was glass till it came down from, like, one floor to the next. And in the meantime, I look around, and, like you, all there, <laughs> I make it! <laughs> and the lobby was full of Japanese. <laughs> Who else? But Japanese, right? With cameras. <laughs> the cameras. <laughs> with the cameras. I'm always there naked with a camera. OK? <laughs> and the kid comes down like this. I thought, what am I going to do? And so I'm doing this sort of thing, you see. 
and then I lay down on the floor like that, <laughs> and I tried to move myself over and press a stop sign to go back to the 16th floor. And all the Japanese saw, and they're all going, ah, look, very nice, look, look. <laughs> I swear to Christ, I was a tourist attraction for about 15 minutes, and I finally got it back up to my room and finally got in. You mentioned earlier this Pirandello play of Henry IV. Yeah. So this means a national tour. With all the touring you've done with, uh, with Camelot, haven't you had enough? No, no, I love it. And that's why, excuse me, dress like this. It sounds a bit rude to come to your show dressed like this, but I'm in rehearsal this minute. I didn't expect you in fact, half the cast are upstairs in your, in your um, what you call, green room. Yeah, having a few drinks up there. But, yeah, I'm doing it. We open Cardiff next Tuesday. Then we go to Bath. Uh, Bath, York, Guildford, Manchester. And then we come into town. Around May, we come to town. You've been filming in the old country, haven't you? Uh, oh, yes. And I know it was a good one, but what could it have been like being back in Ireland and not drinking? Well, they were doing... Oh, very dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> it's like going to church and not saying a prayer. <laughs> it's very dangerous. But I keep... I wanted to do this film, and they thought, well, I kind of wasn't too particular about making any more movies, and this script came up, and they sent it to me to play a great friend of mine, a fellow called Jim Sheridan, who directed My Left Foot. Yes. The small little Irish picture that's just bagged five Academy Award nominations. Not bad for a little picture. And so they were doing it, and, he, and, he, and they were old friends, and they said, would I play a small part in it? And I said, no, nah, I don't want to make any more pictures. And they said, just, just for us. They want to, like, put a lot of names together, maybe get some money for it. And I said, no. So they sent it anyway, Federal Express. And they called me and said, it's there, please read it. And I read it, and I said, hey, man, not only do I want to play, I want to play the lead. This is the greatest part I've ever read in my life. But typical me, I mean, no one wanted me for Sporting Life, no one wanted me for Camelot, I had to bully. And I work a lot, so I bully a lot. But I, I said, you've got to have me. I've got to do this. And they didn't want me for the picture. And I forced them. And I grew the beard, the big, long, white beard, and shaved all my hair off. And I said, look, here I am. I'm the guy. Anyway, finally, I did the picture in the end. It's probably one of the great movies ever made, called The Field. It's unbelievable. It's an unbelievable movie. Actors wait 30 years for parts like this. And, uh, but Ireland is kind of strange. Are you a rugby fan? You wouldn't believe it. I was just going to say there are a couple of subjects I know you don't discuss, and I was going to say... Rugby. Uh, rugby couldn't be one of them at the moment. Well, did you hear about that? The Irish are great. Like, well, I love about the Irish is they've got a great facility to take the kind of mickey out of themselves when things are going bad. And things are going bad for the Irish rugby team right now. And you, and you beat them, you being England, beat them at like 30-something points to nil. 36 points to nil. 36 points to nil! <laughs> <laughs> and there's a guy from Limerick on the team, from my hometown, and when he went back to the limit, he was very ashamed. And he was cycling over O'Connell Bridge, going to work on the following Monday. And Limerick, where I'm from, rugby is a religion. And they shouted at him. They said, Fitzgerald! Fitzgerald! He said, what the bloody hell happened? And Fitzgerald, with his head bowed, said, Jesus wouldn't be lucky to get nil. It's true. Man, God, it's true. I shall leave you something quietly here for a moment while I just move on to the next introduction.